Hey, well, what's up, guys? Welcome back to The Collision. Daniel here to talk about the new comic book movie, Venom, The Last Dance. Just hit theaters. I have seen it, so let's talk about it. So the Sony Studios branch of the Marvel Multiverse is back with another entry in its like Spider-Man universe, which still oddly lacks having an actual Spider-Man. But unfortunately, at least to me, this film also demonstrates that Disney is not the only company right now that is struggling to revive the once dominant superhero genre. Because the nagging question that did linger in my mind really all throughout watching this film was just, why was this movie made? And I still don't think I have a great answer to that question, other than perhaps that Hollywood studios make comic book movies, and this is another comic book movie. I think Venom The Last Dance attempts to go through all the like familiar motions, but it just can't find the right rhythm, can't remember the proper moves, and just combines a lot of like empty spectacle with a very, I think, incoherent plot for a movie that does fail to offer really anything more than just another comic book movie for audiences to consume. But the sun is shining, the weather's nice today, I'm in a good mood, so why don't we start with the positive? And that is that these films have resonated with a lot of people. The first Venom movie back in uh, 2018 was a major, almost surprise, like breakout box office hit. And its sequel, Venom Let There Be Carnage, back in 2021, was also like you know a moderate success as well. I think if there is one element in this series that has resonated with audience, is I think it is the compelling kind of relational dynamic between Eddie Brock, who is played by actor uh, Tom Hardy, and Venom. I think that sort of that symbiotic relationship is rich with this narrative possibilities, and the interplay like, between those two characters is the heart of this series, and I think remains the most enjoyable aspect of The Last Dance as well. Because Venom is an almost like irresistibly fun character with this is like very murky morals and just like unfettered enthusiasm. I think he is responsible for most of this film's humor, even if many of the attempted you know jokes do almost uncreatively just fall back on using his like kind of gruff voice to proclaim you know crude words and profanity. Uh, but obviously the character of Venom needs to work well in a Venom movie, and I think for the most part he does. Really, the problem is everyone else around him, and it's hard to judge Tom Hardy in this film because his character just really doesn't do anything. Uh, for the most part, he's just like a passive participant as the story kind of like unfolds around him. And instead, audiences are given very extended scenes with the antagonists who are just painfully dull and like almost cartoonish characters. You have the cliched mad scientist that's given some vague backstory about her deceased brother that really just doesn't go anywhere interesting. And you also have the typical like no-nonsense military man. But even like less exciting than those characters are the like more extraterrestrial, you know, the bigger villains in this movie. Because the big baddie, uh, he spends the entire film with his like face downcast in some cosmic prison, seemingly just reserved for some, you know, future story to, to you know, bring him back out. Leaving most of the, the threat to, to fall down to his like alien minions who are really just mindless CGI creatures that kind of only show up just when you know another action sequence is needed. And screenwriter Kelly Marcel, whose kind of major work prior to the Venom series was writing the Fifty Shades of Grey movie, uh, makes her a directorial debut with The Last Dance. And I think her inexperience is very evident here. Because this is just like the type of story where like stuff happens and then different stuff happens and without any real sense that like all the scenes and the story threads are being woven into any sort of like unified or cohesive whole. It's almost more like a collection of scenes rather than it is a singular story. For example, the movie begins with Eddie and Venom needing to travel from Mexico to New York, but before they leave, they're gonna make a quick detour to go shut down some like dog fighting operation, not because it furthers the story or even like, establishes any of like the internal character tension, but simply because there needs to be a action scene to start off this movie. And kind of later, that symbiotic duo almost like inexplicably runs into uh, Miss Chen, who is a character from the previous films in a Las Vegas hotel, which leads to a very like, bizarre dance scene in her penthouse. Why? Uh, I think seemingly only to include a very forced cameo of an established character, even though that scene itself completely abandons like important plot details that had just been established like a few seconds earlier. And then that side character is just kind of promptly, you know, forgotten about and absent for the rest of the story. And I think there's a similar like dissonance thematically, where like during an escape from you know special government forces, Eddie is forced to kill a soldier and he does experience kind of like, deep remorse for the act. And it's just 
a bit of an odd emotional beat in a story that did begin with him taunting a bunch of villains and watching as their heads were bitten off by Venom. And obviously, like, those men were clearly bad guys, and technically it was Venom, uh, not him, that committed the murders. But The Last Dance, as a movie, just fails to establish any kind of central theme or conflict for the character um, of Eddie. You know, you have characters like Batman who, you know, must seek the narrow line between, you know, justice and vengeance, or Spider-Man who, you know, must find his heroic identity, you know, outside of his suit or powers, or Iron Man kind of, you know, the, the line between selfishness and selflessness. Uh, but The Last Dance is just too, I think, narratively inconsistent to commit to any sort of clear arc for Eddie, other than perhaps sort of just general themes of kind of controlling the darkness in each of us. As far as content to consider, things going on on the surface of this. Uh, there is a little bit, although maybe not you know too much. This is still a PG-13 um, movie. Um, probably most of it comes with language. Uh, there is one uh, clearly articulated F-bomb. And then there's a second one that is like kind of interrupted before it is completed, but you definitely know the words that were intended to be spoken. Uh, there's also just, you know, other frequent profanities uh, all throughout the film. And I think God and Jesus, kind of their names, are both used multiple times, as well as just other kind of crude, um, you know, words about, you know, men's reproductive organs or, you know, sexually promiscuous uh, women. As far as violence, there is some violence in this as well. Like I mentioned, characters get their heads bitten off uh, by venom and you do see him like bite down on them but you don't see like the bloody aftermath of you know their headless corpses or anything like that there's also kind of the alien creature minions of the big bad guy in this um kind of as they consume several people in this film kind of blood sprays out the back of their head almost like you know wood chips coming out of a machine um you do see one man that kind of is saved from that gruesome end but you know is missing the bottom half you know missing both of his legs and there's other characters and also like symbiotes that are killed in a final battle with those aliens first thanks nothing uh, in this film for that uh, the only other kind of like, content thing to keep in mind is there is like a hippie character that at one point sort of talks about like a mystical spiritual doorway within the mind as far as themes, worldview, uh, things going on beneath the surface of this film, uh, like I said, I think kind of the main thing that does um, perhaps come out um, in this movie is that idea of sort of the monster inside of each of us. Because uh, at one point, there's a character that tells Eddie Brock, everyone has monsters inside of them, to which Eddie responds, not like I do. And in a sense, kind of neither character is wrong. I think kind of the black goo, head chomping alien entity living inside Eddie is obviously like a more extreme and like personified darkness. But I think it's also, in a way, like an interesting metaphorical representation of sort of the darkness and the sinful nature within uh, all people, even if this movie doesn't necessarily get around to exploring that you know, idea in any real depth, and certainly not from like any overtly spiritual perspective. And Eddie is like an ordinary guy who's just doing his best to contain uh, Venom. And I think kind of at this point in the series, he's probably more closely aligned with like a traditional hero than he is an anti-hero. Like he does seem to be a decent guy, uh, just one with a you know man-eating alien living inside of him. And I think, but like throughout the film, he does wrestle with sort of his own like culpability of some of the actions that he has committed. Kind of questioning: like, Is it all Venom, or is he also uh, to? blame and he does sort of him and venom um have you know several conversations where they discuss and ask the question like hey are we the bad guys are we good are we bad and they seem to accept that they are in fact uh, bad guys even if eddie continues to sort of fight against that and ultimately his journey does sort of culminate in a third act and which he does seem to sort of fully embrace this you know this responsibility as a hero uh, and a protector and obviously in scripture uh, the apostle paul wrote you know for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory uh, of God. And like, Venom, The Last Dance, by no means is like a perfect allegory for that spiritual reality, but I do think it does provide some at least like intriguing visuals and just frameworks for Christian audiences to kind of contemplate it. So in the end, this movie, this is not a good uh, movie. I think kind of, I think an unfortunate trend in recent years, I think mostly due to like the advent of streaming, is that art and entertainment sort of became reduced to just to mere content, a sort of like manufactured good to be consumed in just mass quantities. And I think in many ways, Venom The Last Dance is almost like a poster child for like the entertainment as content. Uh, this is not a movie I think that you go to watch for like, artistic excellence or fresh storytelling or, you know, any kind of like, inventive cinematic execution. Uh, you watch it simply because, you know, you're bored and there it is ready to be uh, consumed. I think you know, for some, particularly, you know, if you're like a diehard fan of the Marvel comics, hey, maybe that's all that you desire for this movie to be. Uh, but I think for people who have maybe began to, you know, develop a bit of a stomach ache from just the empty calorie consumption of these sort of uninspired, mass-produced slate of 
comic book movies that we've you know repeatedly got in you know recent years i think hey this might be a dance that is just worth skipping but hey i would love to hear what you think if you do go check out this movie if you enjoyed the first ones or you know just hey you, you love comic book movies uh, don't be shy jump into the comment section uh, let's have a conversation about it if you're done so too encourage you guys subscribe to the channel become a collider you know, lots of other movie reviews and got our faith in pop culture podcast and interviews and just other fun stuff would love to have you be a part of that but most of all guys thank you for watching stay safe and continue to collide through world for christ